Welcome back to the DreamHack Pro Circuit live from Valencia, Spain, where Veloce Esports found a way to eke a victory 3-1 to one over that of Renegades. But we are just getting things started here, guys. Any remaining thoughts on what we got out of that last series here between Gibbs and Turtle? Uh, just a little bit rough for the Renegades, yeah. see if they can bounce back. But now their day one got a lot harder because of that loss. You have to start off strong at DreamHack because if you don't, it turns into really rough brackets. So. And Veloce looked great with a lot of the you know, great mechanics. I think their offense was solid. And we saw Nilos Cook come in. He was just excited to be back here. And, you know, he said it's been so long since he's competed, you know, side by side. So that makes DreamHack so important. And it's so... It it was so great for them to, to get experience on the stage, right? Yeah. That's exactly what we were talking about with Flame. A lot of close performances to the RLCS, high-pressure situations. Well, being on stage, very high pressure, and they perform. Yeah, and I thought it was really, I was, the minute he started talking about nerves and how he was willing to address, like, you know, I'm not always the most confident necessarily. I feel less, con or I feel more confident now than I had in the past. And willing to address that level of nerves may be a problem and that we're trying to diffuse those through, you know, just increasing the sample size. I thought that was like, uh, immediately I looked at Niels Cook and I was like, I feel like you're going to go somewhere. Uh, yeah. You know, understanding that yeah. and willing to apply that and really try and improve. And that's why it's so great. We have four Dream Hacks uh, this year. So those teams that uh, don't get that experience by playing the RLCS, then here's their warm up to get better and better to get ready for the RLCS. Yeah, and being able to understand that nerves are a factor that you need to actually pay attention to. A lot of players come in and they don't think that the mental game is so important. They just need to focus on playing well. But it's really just addressing and, you know, you know how you view your mental game. Yeah, look... Uh, well, it's so funny because we always talk about, oh, you have to play well on stage. No, you have to play exactly the same as you did online. <laughs> Everyone else is going to play worse probably because yeah. of those nerves. So as long as you play the same, that's what we talk about with Cloud9 all the time. They always do so well because it looks like they're playing from home, right? So yeah. that's what you have to practice. I think the best way to describe it for anybody, you know, at home, you've had that one guy flame you in whatever game you've played, and he goes, 1v1 me, bro. And take, <laughs> take, take that one versus one, and you'll realize your mental state escalates quick and yeah. whenever you get into that you realize like oh my goodness when there's a lot in the line for you suddenly the mentality is going to shift yep. it, it gets a lot harder and it's literally just who can stay the closest to their normal performance yeah. and level. it's the same when we see long overtimes right everyone just gets very passive very defensive you don't want to make that mistake so it's all about those nerves how does uh, that play factor and when you go on stage and have a long overtime that's when you get to see some of those star players really show up yeah and some of the players told me that they i was asking you know when i, when I used to play i asked a lot of players how they you know stay calm and have a good mental game. A lot of them said they just picture themselves in their bedroom when they're on stage <laughs> playing the game. So it's interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. There's a lot of techniques there uh, to be able to keep cool, calm, and collected. But we are going to get this series now underway, and it is going to be between TSM and Complexity. And I feel like this is going to be a doozy yeah. one, mainly because these are some of our best performers and upsets coming out from DreamHack Dallas. Yeah, we saw TSM. They got a second place. And, of course, Complexity kind of with a big upset to make top eight as well. So they finished fifth, losing to Cloud9. Both TSM and Complexity lost to Cloud9 at the end of the day. So both teams really performed well. And plus, like, these two teams are peers, right? Like, in the European region, we saw Complexity. They just moved up. TSM, they finished sixth. So this is a proven ground to see, like, who's going to make some leaps for a top four finish 100%. at the next RLCS. Yeah. TSM didn't make Worlds, so then what do they do? They come to DreamHack Dallas, and they completely obliterate it. They they almost win, but it, the thing that you know stood out the most to me was their defense. The entire time, they seemed so solid, relying so much on Metzenaris to you know get those transition games and the counter clear. So I'm interested to see if they can do that here. It's interesting because I, I you know. Moving into a more meta focus of Rocket League and what seems to matter, it seems like for some era it was that teamwork and the offense being introduced through that teamwork. I think of Dignitas in their prime, right? Uh, that coming to light. Then it was the kind of the outplay mechanics of Cloud9 and having people like Squishy to be the Justins to stand out and be your outperformer. But it feels like recently it's been a much more a trend of who holds their own on the defensive front. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, it seems like, again, when you go on stage and those nerves, it comes down to do you have a solid defense? And we'll look at complexity, man. They came out of nowhere we saw one of the worst roster moves in the history everyone talks about it when uh they moved metanoris off the team and then got relegated but they bounced back really quickly by picking up flakes and that was a last second roster move for dreamhack leipzig back in the day so they're back in the rlcs now magnus one of the best performers in the rlcs it's gonna be fun to see him again but we want to see him at dreamhack once again uh, try and make a top eight run here 
And oh man, complexity is exploding from the Rival series. So excited to see them. Every time they're on stage here, especially at DreamHack Dallas, I was so curious to see how they were going to perform. And, and it's just, every time they play, I love the speed and the pace, at the way they connect passes on the field. And we get to see Greasy going up against Remco, old teammates, uh, both world champions as well. So a lot of experience on both sides of the field as we go over to TSM. They obviously won E-League, so then TSM picks them up. But since then, not the greatest results until DreamHack Dallas, where they got that second place finish. We see Ignite here. We talk about, like, I'll talk about it a little bit more later with the offense, uh, but Ignite hasn't really been stepping up in that uh, sense. Yeah, and that's something I want to talk about here quickly, Gibbs, is with TSM, though we did get a second place performance coming out from them, it felt like they had a bit more of an advantageous bracket, if you will. Sure, they face two rival series teams, and I think TSM, they will always try and counter mistakes, right? That's how they game plan, that they play defense first and then just work on beating teams by mistakes. And that worked against the rival series teams, but to be fair, they also played energy to get that easy side of the bracket on day two, so they beat one of the best teams in the world to get there. My concern with TSM is the offensive side. It doesn't seem like they have a lot of cohesion yeah. uh, trying to get some passes going. We saw them at DreamHack Dallas, 25 games on stream. Nine times they were shut out. They lost 10 games uh, total, so they have to find that offense. They only scored three or more goals four times on uh, when we saw them on stage. So it's a problem for TSM. The offense isn't there, and when you rely on defense, say you have one mistake or two mistakes in a game, it seems like TSM, they don't... Well, they can't bounce back from that because their yeah. offense is just not there. And in DreamHack Dallas, it was their transition game. You know, they were so solid on defense, and then Metzenaris would get a huge clear and then find an opening in that offensive yeah. hole of their opponents. And a lot of it is, like, when higher teams and top-tier teams crumble, I feel like TSM is always there just staying consistent and staying, and staying solid. But now, what if all these top-tier teams that fell at DreamHack Dallas are actually here to play and to win at this one? Yeah, yeah we, we saw it, actually, with Mouse Sports. When they played Mouse Sports, they were down 2-0 in the series. Then we saw the old Mouse Sports come back, just giving some wide-open nets. And TSM, they capitalized on every single one of those to win that series. Yeah, I feel like TSM really embodies the mentality of why, you know, having the best defense, it does not provide a win condition. And what is the plight and the kind of the problems that you're going to be introduced if that is your biggest strength, at least as of late. But we are going to get our vote underway now. It is time to decipher here, and we're going to start things off with Turtle on who you think will, in fact, take the series between between TSM and Complex. I think how well they performed at DreamHack Dallas is going to be a huge factor for them, and the confidence is flowing through them. Hopefully, we see some offensive pressure from TSM. If they can move it forward, I think TSM are going to take it. I'm going to go Complexity here. Like, I okay. think they have a little bit more to prove. They just made it to the RLCS. Like, I bet they're practicing probably a little bit harder than TSM right now, who's probably getting ready for that summer break. Uh, TSM knows they're in the RLCS, and they know what they need to do to do better, but that's like two or three months away, right? Yeah. But I think Complexity is still trying to learn as a team, so I think they're probably going to be a little bit more prepared for this tournament, so I'm going Complexity. Yeah, I actually I actually agree there, Gibbs. I'm on your side here as well. Wow. I feel like some of the hunger coming out from Complexity and the performance that we got from them last time, though you could say, well, TSM got second. I yeah. feel like it's that eagerness, that mentality, which we know is a pretty relevant factor, not only in the world of Rocket League, but just esports in general here, and I think that's what Complexity can lean on in this series. But this is going to be fun. Like, uh, these are series that we like to see. We haven't seen Complexity versus TSM in a long time. And that's what DreamHack brings, right? These matchups, not only with the uh, international play, but we also get to see two European teams that are going to be in the RLCS, see how they stack up. It's going to be a lot of fun. This is one of my favorite matchups I've seen in quite a while. We got Magnus versus Metza, and we got Greasy yeah. versus Remco. Huge rivals. They, yeah. they know each other so well. I'm, I'm just, I can't wait to watch this. Yeah, it's a beautiful battle of, like, the old gods of Rocket League. You know, some exactly. of the, they, it's not like they're out of form by any means, but you know, used to be sitting atop the throne and uh, sitting on the same side of the battlefield. And now, what happens when you know we get that later generation here of it? And I was surprised there. Our vote came in, and it was only about a four you know percent different. The 54 sitting on one side, 46 on the other. I, I figured that TSM, you know, just off of name and org alone, yeah. it's not like complexity isn't that big, but I just thought that they would dominate the uh, the fan favorites. Yeah. So I talked to TSM in the hotel lobby uh, like yesterday, and they're like, "No one's respecting us. We just came in second. So like, I'm not respecting yeah. them, honestly. So wow. I don't." You know, Ooh, but, hey, that's, that's hey, how it's gonna be. I'm just saying, like, it's weird to see that it's so close of a vote when TSM just came in second place. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, though. Complexity, Greasy was considered one of the best players so long ago. He's a staple in the community, and Magnus is so solid as well. And with their new pickup, Flakes, how is it going to perform? Well, you know, I'm really excited, but... 
they always come through with, you know, like you said, hunger and mm -hmm. aggressiveness. Yeah, and we'll see if that translates over to a victory there for them. But first, we've got to go ahead and introduce our commentary crew for this next series. And to no surprise, it is going to be none other than Johnny Boy and Shogun. I don't believe we're doing the two boxes, so I guess I'm just throwing over to them. Thank you very much. I guess so. uh, yes, I guess we're here now, which is good to know. But the Complexity Redemption Trail rolls through to Valencia. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been trying to make up for ever since they dropped out of the RLCS. They picked up Flakes, and Flakes is a rising star right now. If there's anyone on this pitch I'm going to be looking at throughout this series, it's got to be him. Yeah, Flakes is that X Factor. You know, I ignite on, uh, on TSM when he came into this lineup. He was sort of a guy that everybody's looking at, the new... Uh, you know, the new player, the guy who has the most drive to succeed. And he's had a bit of success. You know, they won E-League back in the, uh, this, the end of last year. Uh, they just came second to the last three back. But Complexity, they're like more steady on the rise, I would say. And they're hungry for more. So I think I probably have to agree with the desk again to give them the edge in this matchup. Yeah, I is definitely one of those players that you don't expect too much mechanically from him. His sort of play level is very much aligned to how the rest of his team is playing. The more times he gets to shoot, the more successful he is, because that is his main thing in these games. He is a true striker. Bim bam. Pretty much. Bim bam from Ignite and uh, from TSM in general. Let's maybe see if it works bim. out. More bam. <laughs> more bam. No, no, we maybe need more bim. That's what they're lacking so far. Well, at the moment, his complexity backed up in a corner, but. Is a place that they should be pretty comfortable with. Blake's world class in defense, very well known for his, especially third man defending. Nice and Iris just gets a reset on the ceiling there, but leaves it for teammate. DSM at the moment are trying to just find that opening complexity, comfortably sitting back, swatting away everything that comes their way. Yeah, just a little bit of offense from TSM at the moment, testing the defensive complexity. We start to see the pace starting to ramp up. Complexity, leave their goal oh. open, and Remco's not going to score an easier one than that. Love the Octane Remco. Good to see him back in that car. It's a rare double commit from Complexity. And not just that, a really poor clear. Straight down the middle. That is incredibly easy for TSM to shut down. You need to be more creative with your clears against a team like TSM, who are going to be trying to get all over every single clear ball. Yeah, Complexity going to the Veloce school of clearing, just you know, the execution that Veloce had in our previous series. Look, this is some phenomenal play from TSM trying to move the ball downfield. Positioning afterwards, though, not so great. Metzenaris tries to recover, and he's got a block, but going to keep that in the blue side of the field. Remco, another big clear. I mean, complexity's opportunity to try and move this ball offensively, because Ignite's not got a great touch, ran out of boost. I think I just spotted a Greasy and a Dominus. This indeed he is, so that's... Like, I think the first time I've seen him play that car. I'm curious to see how that turns out. I mean, he's already one of the scariest aerial players. Now he's an Indominus. That could be a pretty deadly combination. Or maybe he's just going to flop around and miss the ball a lot. We'll have to wait and see. There is only two forms of Greasy, and you've just described that. Well, both of them. <laughs> Ignite takes his time, but so does Flakes. Took better earlier on, but... Flakes one of those players. If he is on the goal line and you take a shot, Flakes is saving that shot. Yeah. You need to try and pull him out of position. Otherwise, you are not going to find a way past. Speaking of Flakes, almost gets a challenge, but Ignite does cover well. Yeah, Dreadnought was talking about 1v1 me, bro, on the desk earlier. No, you I don't want that. I don't think that's something TSM are going to be interested in saying in the all chat, because Flakes probably the best 1v1 player in the world at the moment over to Complexity. And if he does end up in those head-to-head -head situations, you expect him to come out on top. No flip reset for Flakes. Easy save for Metza, but it's only as far as Greasy. He's waiting for the bounce, smashes it. Top corner. Joint is going to save the shot for TSM. Yeah, and Flakes has done well just to buy his team a little bit of time to move back into position. Didn't get a great follow-up touch, though, in the corner. It's going to be Ignite. Oh, just bobbles towards Magnus. I have to make, break too much of a sweat to keep that one out. We're going to see TSM just clearing along a lot more often as we head towards the second half of this game. TSM, not a team you ever want to be a goal down against. I consider like two teams out there that seem to hold on to leads very well. TSM and Cloud9. Yeah, you can maybe throw Vitality in there as well if they play like they did at Worlds Day 3, but you're absolutely right. TSM are very comfortable at the moment. Complexity have got to be more creative with their clear balls. At the moment, everything that they're trying is just getting immediately shut down by TSM. It's too obvious, too direct. They need to either start passing more in defense, dribbling more, you know, anything that's going to make it harder for TSM to read what they're doing, and straight away Flakes is actually going to dribble it out, and that gets them out of the 
blue half immediately. The same to fight right back though, his chest from Metza. Nice to shoot it down low, and that's almost a target greasy there for the save. Oh, what a great follow-up touch my Ignite. Run out boost though, and he's gonna be very late coming back here. 3v2 advantage currently for complexity, but counts for nothing. And Ignite still down the other side of the field, looks to try and turn provider. But you can see where TSM are positioned. Two players right on the midfield line. They will happily settle for this. Yeah, they're reading the clears very well, shutting them all down. Complexity. I've got to try and find the opening. Greasy attempts to carry it over the top. Very safe air dribble there. Greasy sitting behind the ball. Will they get any follow up? Ognis brings it down. Flakes is close. They're starting to work their way forward. TSM still have men back. They've still got spare defenders waiting in the wings. And they're not looking vulnerable at all in defense. TSM are being helped out a lot as well because they're not committing their first challenge out of all three players until Complexity reach the halfway line. That means that even if it goes wrong, there's still multiple options for them to try and move around with. This is going to go all the way down the field. Does bounce off the side. Might be an opportunity to finally move forward, but Greasy didn't end up jumping. And now TSM maybe go for a second goal, but once again, just holding on to the midfield, looking for this 1-0 win. They've got 20 seconds to hold on further. Nice little fake challenge there for Remco. Loops back around and takes the ball for free in the final 10 seconds. Now it's just been an entire five minutes of TSM shutting down clear after clear. Complexity getting seeded. Another goal in the final six seconds of the game. It's that goal that we saw earlier on, that very sloppy clear that we saw from Complexity ended up meaning so much more to this game yeah. than originally thought because TSM were happy just to rely on that. And they made that decision very early on in the game. Yeah, they're just sitting back and waiting for opportunities to come. So, I mean, TSM, like you said, they're, they're good when they got, got a lead. They're very, very good at holding on to it. And it's when they, you know, go down 1-0, then they start to be a bit too risky and it ends up 2-0, 3-0 in the other team's favor. Uh, but game one, clean sheet for TSM. And complexity have got to be a little bit more careful with those defensive commitments to the ball. We saw two double commits, two goals. Absolutely. They know where they went wrong there. I want to see a little bit more creativity. Uh, I mean, they're not being challenged for a very long time whenever they get a hold of the ball. They can afford to boost up, uh, they can afford to position Metza a little bit got better. water over there. Oh, Torsos had it. one just the same size. Yeah, Red Metza, somebody needs to get that guy some water. I don't think he's got enough. 1-0 Remco, the easiest goal he's going to score all day, like you said. Uh, yeah, I think the name of the game for complexity going into this second one is going to be trying to get the ball out their half without yep. getting dunked on, without getting uh, intercepted. If they can actually start getting the ball past TSM players, then they can start thinking about winning the series. I would love to see them try and utilize the walls a little bit more as well. Just, It doesn't seem like they've got many options when it comes to trying to clear. It's just go long or dribble. Yeah. And those are both very easily challenged if you've got the right positioning. And TSM, when it comes to defensive positioning, always going to have that one on lock. So for complexity, it's about trying to find out what is going to work. And more importantly, making sure that first goal doesn't go over as easily this time. Yeah, impressive stuff from TSM, certainly in game one. You know, we were talking about complexity misplays, but they might have been caught off guard because TSM are known for playing very quickly, very fearlessly. And I think that complexity probably expected a faster and more ball chase TSM to come out in game one. And actually, they're playing very controlled and very, very safe. Let's see if complexity are going to calm down to counter that. That's a good first challenge from Magnus, but it only goes straight back over to Remco. Second touch available for Greasy. Gets it off the backboard, but I know he's read that so quickly. Did not believe that there was only going to be a single tap. Well, Greasy forces another challenge out from Metzenaris. Now an opportunity to try and clear, but I ignite zero boost. Can't do it. Yeah, I ignite still not for boost over there. It's like he might have stolen some in yes, or complexity's end, rather. Slow stuff again from TSM, although this time it looks like players are just not able to reach the ball rather than deciding against it. Flake City, waiting for an opportunity. Flake is just doing circles <laughs> at the edge of the box here. Right, go flip reset. He's decided to use it. Of course, you have to use your flip reset even if you are nowhere near the ball. One of the new unwritten rules in Rocket League. Flakes to the corner. It's a late challenge, but Ignite is there for it. Complexity controlling the midfield at the moment. They're trying to make sure that they get the 400 boost between them. Of those large boosts, the TSM slowly working their way forward. Ignite chooses to leave. 
There was actually a passing option if Remco decided to hold himself midfield, but instead, he was happy to slowly try and break down complexity. Flakes, ball on his hood, early flick from him. Expect better. Yeah, Flakes, certainly the player that you expect the, the best ground plays out of in this whole lobby, both teams. But although he's the only player who's known for his 1v1 ability, it doesn't mean he's the only one who knows how to dribble, so look out for Grand plays on either side. Metz going to air dribble this one in. He's got a few extra touches, but Magnus handles it. Actually, Remco clears it. Fart complexity. What on earth was that? Oh! Flakes couldn't get around the shot. I think it was just a bit too far to the right for him to get to. What a mis weird misplay by Remco. I don't even know if that was intentional as he flips into the ball. He might have been mid dodge and just caught it clean. Seven minutes of gameplay overall. Only two goals scored, both of them belonging to TSM. Complexity still looking for that very first one of their. Uh, upper bracket finals. That's Naris. Leaves it for Ignite. And Ignite definitely tried to catch Flakes out, but Flakes able to recover in time. Every single challenge is going to TSM at the moment. They are getting right into the middle of the ball and winning. Yeah, Complexity are playing a bit more slow, but there's that clear straight down the middle. We saw in game one, and it's going to bite them once again. TSM on the back of Ignite get this goal. Does not need to go. Yeah, they have be a double commit. Same thing. It feels like we're watching game one all over again as there's a double commit and a clear ball straight down the middle. Here we go. 3 now now overall to TSM as they look to try and take game at number two. It's been controlled. It's not exactly been the most exciting game of Rocket League ever played, but if you're a fan of strategy, if you're a fan of the mental side of Rocket League, this has been the series for you. Yeah, very technical stuff. TSM has been the more consistent of the two teams so far. Decent shot by Remco. He's actually, or Ignite rather, but he's going down low there intentionally. Make it awkward for the defender who's coming off the back wall. Love that placement. Ignite pops the ball up. Metza doesn't want to go for that one. And Greasy's actually a passing option. Couldn't quite get there in time. Metza did have the read. Remco searching for a bump on Flakes. Going to be passed right over. Remco again off the post. 2-0 could have been the end of this game. That was crucial that that was kept out. Yeah, Flakes looks like he did just enough to dissuade them. And oh, what well, a save by Ignite. Wow. Well, Greasy's aerial, that came out of nowhere. Such a good pass in field. Greasy did not hold back in the shot, but Ignite, once again, great read of defense. And this is where Complexity can't afford to get frustrated. It was during the final few moments of the last game where they knew they absolutely had to go for a goal that they got caught for the second one. They go for it early in this game with a minute left. They could get ramped up to two or three down, but Wide Flakes open. open net, and he's not going to miss it. 1-1. One, one. Brilliance by Mognus at the near post. He fakes Remco, and then he gets the favorable 50-50. Might have actually just popped his straight past the TSM defender, and there wasn't, you know, good enough communication on TSM side this time. They're doing a bit of a complexity impression there. Two players diving in at the same time. Every single goal this series Called the double commit. Is this going to be the first one that doesn't? No, it's not. Yes, Sam are not able to get that second one just yet. Lovely pop up from Metz Could have done a little bit further forward for him. Metz didn't have enough boost to try and pinch that one downwards. It's going to be Remco. Immediately blocked. Flakes and Greasy up against Metz by himself. Flakes takes it by himself as well. 2 1. Complexity have turned this around. And it's a 1v1 master Flakes getting a solo goal with a mind game. Just fake that shot across the goal to the bottom right corner and gets right behind it. Even if the defender does get a light touch, he's going to be there for the dunk. Big plays by Flakes, complexity up by one. 40 seconds left, TSM. This is going to be the first time they're chasing a game. We're going to see probably the fastest place gameplay we've seen from them so far. Metzenaris is double committed with Hive Knight. This is becoming a recurring problem for TSM. Metz once again, moving the ball down. Going to be required one more time. Remco's slowly moving up. Can't get any further though as Greasy does clear. Yeah, good knock on there by Greasy. Then all the way into the corner. No easy way for TSM to send that back into their half. And another center ball coming in. Flakes went up for that. And now Greasy's alone at the back, but Remco's got it hugging the wall. Not the best position for him. And now another accidental clear by Remco in the wrong way. It's not even going to roll up. That's going to be one all in the series. Complexity win this on the back of a Flakes solo play basically stole that match in a matter of seconds. But Complexity got what they needed. They are now 1-1 in the series. And TSM, just that, that first goal they conceded 
it seemed like you just weren't used to that first player challenge not going for them. As soon as it went against them for the first time, they panicked. Yeah, they did. There was, uh, you know, one player rotating back, decided I might be able to get a touch on this. And I think it was Ignite in goal, thinks maybe I should go up for this. Good to see the Rocket League audience out and already awake and ready to cheer in day one. Team 104 has been imported from yeah, London. Got to make more noise in the CSGO stage across the hall, see who can win that battle over the course of the weekend. There's one lad in there who I fairly certain could do that by himself. <laughs> Certainly a few of them. I think Craftman's got it covered, lads. Hello, Mognus. You know, that was just phenomenal play from him. The fact that he just kept it so simple. He yeah, knew he had yeah. the advantage on challenges. And this from Flakes, a kind of a situation where I think his reputation preceded him. Yeah. It looks like he might have actually lost control of the ball ever so slightly, and then that was the only, you know, faking it was the only option he had. Um, but he's got such a reputation, like you said, for the 1v1 ability right now. Um, just all of a sudden, in 2019, he's come out of nowhere and he's now the best 1v1 player on the planet. Let's see if TSM can handle him in game number two. Great demo by Greasy. His ball chase on the recovery. Might as well. And he doesn't play the ball, he plays the car. Because that does not cause a ball until 50-50 to happen in their half. A save there. You know, these close to the goal double commits for players who are recovering fast, not really going to cause Blankstein any problems. It's those Double commits where players are having to land far away from the ball, like we saw in game one. That's the ones that they want to be avoiding. Bouncing down to Remco. Chanish goes straight out to the midfield. Lovely demo from Mognus, but Metsnaris kept himself very awake for that one. Understood that he needed to try and help out. Ignite looking for the corner yet again. Remco. We have a better idea here. I prefer if they do try and go for double taps. You know, these long clears aren't really going much of anywhere. Just seemingly handing over possession. Yeah, TSM had success with this in game one. They just kept on knocking the ball into Complexity's end and waiting for a bad clear to come in. But Complexity at the moment are not calling for that trap as much as they were. In both games so far, they've had a bad clear straight down the middle. Let's see if they can go game three without doing so. We're straight down to Remco. First tap from Remco. He can now start to work this one downfield. He has boost. Goes for the bump as well. Greasy's taken out, but Mognus. Able to help out Greasy Meister. Still nil nil, just over a minute played. Incredibly physical game here. And again, another demo from Magnus on the recovery. But I love that. Playing the car rather than the ball. You're coming from the blind spot. It's not like the attackers could have any idea. And you're avoiding those really risky angle 50 50s as well. Yeah, both teams leaving players around. Trying to steal a couple of the back boosts if they're available. And then just make a sweep across as Ignite's going to be quite thankful to see that one. Just skirt in front of his own goal. Very Chance. tense here for put this first goal. It's limited boost inside of TSM, but I think Remco just used all of his. He didn't even make contact with the ball. Let's see if they can break out. It looks like Blinks is just going to let Metsa dribble at him there. I think an earlier challenge would give Mognus a much easier time in the back there, but... I think he had the eye on the potential infield. I wanted to try and cover it. Yeah. But, you know, you have a teammate there. He can probably cover that one just as well as you can. You don't need to try and take on everything. You just need to try and force the play as early as possible. All tied up. It's actually been... It's like a really quick game. We're already at halftime. Blake's going to try and double touch this clear. It's going to bounce to the field, actually. Two goalkeepers for complexity. Nobody coming out. Flakes has to go again. This is looking like the kind of position that TSM were able to turn into a goal after an extended period of time in game one. Yeah, Danger. For complexity, they need to be careful here. One bad clear is all it takes for TSM to be in front. This is the level where no mistakes can be allowed. Remco, another flip reset from him. He actually delayed it. Magnus out of the goal line, though. I think just given Remco's positioning, it was never going to be overly difficult to save. But still, potential for a double commit. Complexity, avoid any further complications. Complexity have done well not to panic there. Countered the playstyle of TSM quite nicely. Good recovery by Mognus. The clear is not going to go far enough, though, and Ignite puts it in. And there was another off the ball play here. Remco on to Greasy. And this time, Mognus gets the clear all wrong. That has to go into a more safe location. Ignite will punish him. And that's 1 0 TSM again. Well, this has been the result and the starting goal every single time going to TSM. Last time. Complexity were able to turn it around to take a 2 1 win. Can they do it again? Flakes. Pop up. He's going to follow. 
Got a couple of options. Magnus isn't going to turn, and Greasy's probably going to be the next player in. Gets a lovely touch. Magnus racing against Ignite, and Ignite just pops it before the shot could come in. It's a little boost from Edsa, but does get a good 50-50, and he's bumping Greasy as well. That lets Ignite come in. Decided to try and shoot this one. It looks like Flakes has some time, but no, Remco's going to beat him to it. Flakes landed the wrong way. Now it's just another demo and an open net for Metsonoris. He puts it in off the rebound. This has been a game all about those demos. Goalie eliminated from the equation. Metsonoris delivers. And yeah, you'd expect better from Magnus as well with his clear. Tried to read it off the wall from his own touch and just completely sailed past it. Well, the demo was definitely more than helpful, but now a minute left. Complexity have got to do what they did last game, and they've got to do it one step extra. Two goals to overcome, 60 seconds to do it. Uh, it just doesn't look likely with TSM playing such a consistent game. So good when they're in front, like you said last game. Taking their time. That's going to pop another one into the middle, but nobody at the back post to receive it. That's fine though for TSM. They don't commit too hard for it. Now everybody's back, ready to deal with the counter. It's like a swarm as they all scuttle back into their own side of the field. Just like, guys, play over, let's go. Back, 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 back. Right now they might be in a bit more of an awkward position though. It's underneath one, but just in the nick of time, Ignite revives. Clears the danger. Another flip reset. Ignite decided to just let that one go. His ball was sitting up behind him. It's only 15 seconds for complexity. Need two goals. Oh, that's not a great touch from Remco. Blake tries to take it down, but it was a heavy first touch from him. They've got to try and get this one in immediately. Metsonaris keeps it around. Shot up a little bit too high. But that oh! is going to pop in. Magnus finds the angle. That's a great finish by Magnus. Blinks, you know, after a heavy first touch, he did well to recover and set up the ceiling play. Look at the placement though by Magnus. He had Remco straight in front of him, had to go either side. Remco's got to be sitting there and thinking, did that just go through me? No, Magnus just pulled that off. Four seconds, complexity. I've got to get the ball under control and in the air. That's not a bad outcome. Greasy shot into the bar. No oh. way. It was all a question about who got to that one first. Wow. Turned out it was going to be the floor. TSM on match point, And if they can take it, they move through to day two. And I just wonder what else could Greasy have done there on the zero second play. It landed so well for him. He decided to shoot early. Maybe, you know, just popping it up high would have given something behind him a chance to come in. It's, I mean, it's hard to say these, these positions are all so It's always so tempting call. as well because you know they've gone for the boost. The goal looks like it's completely open. And you always think to yourself, I could probably grab this. Usually though, you're not going to be fast enough. The defender is going to get back in time. I would have liked to have seen Greasy try and actually take the 1v1 in that situation. Yeah, there could have also, you know, both players going back for boost for TSM. There could have also just been someone else arriving to challenge him and he decided, I've got to shoot this now. He's the one with 30 or so boost on the cheek, but I mean, at least they created the chance. Flexity with some fight in the end. It was that miss clear from uh, Magnus earlier on that really put them in a tough spot this game because that allowed TSM such an easy opening goal. Take a look at this, though. That's a great shot by Magnus. There, there, there's no flair to it. It was just, here's where I need to hit this. I'm going to hit this. I have hit this. Yeah, he did well. Yeah, he had Remco right in front of him, the crossbar as well. Needed to be a quick goal also. He can't just slow roll that one in. That's not enough. Complexity down 2-1. The series that the majority of the analyst desk had them winning. A double touch off target from Metza early on. That'll be great for complexity. Can they get the opening goal in a game? So far, TSM have opened the scoring in all three. First, they've got to get the ball out of their own half. It's right back where it has been for the majority of the series. Flakes takes his time, doesn't want to try and run the ball into Remco. But TSM, they've spread out very well throughout this series. They are seeing what all the options are as Metza bumps Greasy. You know, Greasy wants to try and force a challenge against Remco. Didn't get that far as Remco. Did he go for another flip reset? I think he did, yeah. It's, uh, it's he just, you know what this is? This is when someone first learns the mechanic and they go for it all the time. <laughs> you think Remco just learned how to I flip reset? I think Remco just learned how to flip wow. reset. That's harsh. That is harsh. You think his, his flip resets are that bad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and she's going to score one now that you said that. One and then he's going to do another 20 tomorrow. Yeah. Flip resets are becoming so, so common and so popular now, but you'll love to see it. Plenty of players in this lobby who are capable. Are they going to find the openings to do it? It's a very specific setup necessary in 3v3. You need space and time, and you don't get a lot of that when you're playing against TSM or Complexity. 
Metzer. Tries to force a challenge, can't get there, and Greasy might be able to get it before Rimko gets a touch, but it was not a great one, but still a touch that was needed. Really efficient flight path by Greasy off the wall. I did like the side flip straight in field, getting to the ball as quickly as possible. Is he actually making himself an absolute nuisance in the middle of the pitch right now? KSI were struggling to get it past him. Blake's double touch is going to hit the bar. Blake's here playing very passive with their second man. No early follow-ups on center balls. We're waiting for a clear-cut chance. Are they going to get it? Flakes is, in fact, going to top corner in infield. And there, I guess that answers my question. They are going to get a clear-cut chance. Well, you don't strike it any better than that. Flakes leaves I Ignite a mere spectator to that shot, but what a pass it was. You know, the Absolutely infield perfect, can yeah. be very well read, but that was such a good opportunity because he realized nobody was around. Nobody can challenge this. Let's go for the play. Let's take it now. Yeah, I love that. We're, you know, just mentioned that they're not being aggressive enough for their second man. They're missing opportunities, but their second man moves up into position to receive an infield pass, which is the fastest, which is the type of pass you can get in Rocket League. Like City do know how to play that second man aggressively. Mets has got his dodge here. He's going to put it on target. Saved well enough by Mognus. Greasy was there to follow on. This is the first game of this series that Complexity have taken the first goal in. Can they convert that into a win? Metzenaris. Lovely low challenge, takes out one player. Flex has got to try and recover. Instead, Remco takes an early shot and a little bit wasteful, but they can keep pressure on. I ignite, goes far side, Remco follows. Metzer keeps the pressure going. It's going to be up to him to try and hold his team as they get back into rotation. Although Remco doesn't seem to want to get back into position right now. He was determined to continue playing that one. Yes, and they completely change up their play style when they're down by one goal. They play so much more. If desperate you, for a goal, really. If you showed me tape of the TSM playing without the HUD on, I could tell you what the scoreline is. Yeah, you probably could. Well, you could say for whether they're winning or losing. Yes. 1-0 yeah. down to complexity now, and they're looking a lot more urgent with their play. Even though there's a good bit of time left in the game, you feel like they're going to get some chances. But let's see if they can sit back and wait for them. Or are they just going to rush forward and take themselves out of the game? Magnus with a fantastic read. Remco is up. The clear is not no there, way. though. Oh! Remco fell off the crossbar, couldn't get it underneath. I think that is the second world-class goal we've been robbed of today. So close. It was Torsos earlier that you think yeah, it was. Up, right? Yeah. That was a thing of beauty. So close. Or the Renegades. Who's going to be joining them in the lower bracket after this one? We're set for a game five at the moment. TSM have a minute and change to try and win this one in four, move on to day number two of the competition. Breezy, just puts the ball on, Flakes doesn't want to continue that play. Mets up, Remco's already up, tries to take the shot but couldn't quite reach it. 45 seconds now, TSM ramping up the pressure, they're ramping up the speed. As Remco, he has a couple of options, Mets Norris was in the midfield but Flakes just smothers the potential passing option. TSM still moving forward. They are really quickening the pace here, but they're not getting much for it. Yeah, no, they have to. I mean, they had a couple of minutes earlier on to try and tie this one up now. They've only got 25 seconds, but it looks like they will tie it up. Remco receives the center ball and just sneaks it past the goalkeeper. Ignite really facilitates that well. Magnus gets beat. That was inches from being challenged. But TSM... Back to a goal apiece. Back to being one goal away from sending complexity to lower bracket and proceeding to stage two. Magnus gonna continue to move. He's gonna be just him and someone else as they try and recorrect that rotation from the demo. Midfield, Greasy, he's actually held off because Metznaris goes over to Ignite and Greasy does save. Very good decision making from Greasy Meister. Yeah, he had a lot of pressure on him there. Final few seconds, he's alone at the back, but he does well, and now it's Complexity. Can't get a goal on zero. It's overtime and goal for game four. Complexity need a goal here to keep the series going. Desk chose Complexity to move on. TSM looking to prove them wrong. Magnus forced to back down. Here's Flakes. Can't get anything on that one. Instead, Ignite forced to try and continue the ball. Drop down, should be over to Greasy. Does Greasy have any passing options? No, levers the ball long. Gives his team time to reposition. Yeah, Greasy is always going to boom that, isn't he? 
you know, predictable as it is, it's so it's effective safe. when you're that good at booming the ball. Everybody is at the top level these days. Approaching the first minute of overtime. Yes, Sam in defense. Not where they've been most of the series. Oh, what a recovery by Greasy. No double touch because he does get intercepted, but that was almost directly in as well. Eight boost for Mognos. Plays it low, realized he wasn't going to get challenged for the entirety of that play. Pass into the midfield. Greasy looking for the backboard yet again. It's being covered every single time. The complexity of getting more and more territory as this overtime wears on. TSM have held themselves a little bit further back in their final Last third. Week. And that is a great clear from my Ignite. He tries to get challenged, but Magnus finds a way past. Yeah, it was really good by Ignite to follow up there. Oh, and he's almost stayed up field and redirected that one on target. So far, the defenses of both teams are responding well to the pressure that's being sent their way. Oh, but that's a shot for Greasy. And that'll be the game right there. It's pretty similar, actually, to the goal that they conceded. Ball comes in, and the miss by Metza allows Greasy an opening. We had Magnus earlier on getting beat to the ball to allow TSM back into it. Now his former teammate Metza is taken out of the game by Greasy, and we're going to game five. We absolutely are. First game five of the weekend, at least on stream. And, uh, well, Definitely the two teams to do it. These two, this has been a methodical series of Rocket League so far. We have not seen a team score three goals in a, ma in a game so Indeed, far in yeah. the series. Two seems to have been the limit. So what are you expecting here, Johnny? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to revert to you on this one. Are we expecting more of the same? Or is a team going to try and shock the other? I mean, game five is a pretty difficult time to change up a play style and surprise another team. but. You never know. I mean, I'm, I'm expecting them both to just stick to their guns here. They've looked both very capable of winning this series. I mean, uh, I, I've had complexity winning, of course, as well. So I'll have to stick with, uh, with that prediction. But TSM have looked a lot more composed today than I've seen them in previous DreamHacks. Obviously, last time they came second, but before that, they had a couple of harder stories. So it's good to see them showing up and playing consistent in day number one, although playing to their opponents level is something that they're quite known for doing. So playing well against complexity is something that therefore we'd expect them to do, and they have done. So DreamHack Dallas, Complexity came eight, TSM came second. It's about the top eight, and only one of them can secure their spot for tomorrow. The other one would have to play one more series. Who's it going to be as we head over to Champions Field, game number five? TSM fans are going to be really worried if TSM do drop down in the lower bracket because very often when they do that, they just get eliminated immediately. Complexity, I think, have got more resilience and wouldn't expect to see them drop out in day one by any means, no matter who they run into that TSM lower bracket. TSM did drop out get, uh, day one, day one off during DreamHack Leipzig. Two years in a row. Yeah, I mean, for Remco at very least. Indeed. You know, he's not had great times during day ones. You know, Greasy was on that lineup as well for the original Leipzig, not this year, but 2018. Yeah, the time they lost to London. Indeed. Let's see if they can avoid that repeat. It would be nice for TSN to just get it over with right now. Because what on earth was happening there with the complexity? They're queuing up to not hit the ball. <laughs> just let it roll past them. Looked like such a good pass as well. Got to be taking those chances. You don't get them that often against TSN. I ignite. Just pops the ball into the corner. TSM trying to find some way out of their own side of the field. Flames. Can't get the second. Magnus can. Oh that is a self-bumped Baremko into Ignite and Greasy slowly inching his way forward. That was... I'm sorry, from the angle I was at, I was like certain there was someone over there to pass to. Uh, he's trying to find Flakes by looks things, but he's either hit it too hard or Flakes just didn't communicate that he couldn't get there in time. Either way, Complexity are not connecting with those infield passes so far in Game 5. I wonder if they're going to switch it up or they're just going to keep trying and see if they can get it done. It's going to be Flakes open oh, net. Wow. That's going to pop in. Complexity have got the first goal. And this might do it. TSM have got to go looking to find a way back in. That is such a good bounce for Complexity out of that 50-50. But credit to Flakes, he got there faster. Just, yeah, aggression as a follow-up player that very often creates goals in Rocket League, so heads up to him. He's been scoring a lot of goals this series, Flakes has. 
risky running when you play this style. You could always just be one bad challenge away from dropping a goal. They are indeed one bad clear, which we just saw, by the way, from Complexity, but Remco skied the shot. Complexity have been plagued by bad clears so far this series. Hopefully they can, for their sake, patch up that weakness for the rest of Game 5. They've got just over half the game to hold on to this 1-0 lead. Yes, Sam, have got plenty of time to find an equalizer, though, on the other side of the field, so not expecting to see them go all guns blazing just yet. Well, they didn't do it until the final minute during the last game. It's going to be a shot Remco can save quite easily. But complexity controlling the midfield. Flakes has to try and just slightly redirect his aerial. After a second touch, here's Remco. There is a demo. It's going to be two players currently for TSM. Just over two minutes remaining here. Still one goal to the better for Complexity. Yeah, Complexity are looking pretty solid right now. It's actually TSM looking tame. And here comes Flakes. He's all the play again. He just gets shot down by Agni. What a save by him. Could be a huge save as well because it would have been much more difficult to come back from two against a Complexity team who are looking this difficult to get the ball passed in a game five. Remco does leave. Metzenaris of clear. It's going to be straight over, and Complexity were waiting for that one. That clear had to be a lot more powerful. Instead, it was pretty much just possession handed, although Metza has got a second chance. Goes over the top of Ignite. Remco, he has 34 boost, chooses to back off as Ignite into the corner. Metzenaris chooses to bounce it, but Greasy right in front of him. Didn't allow any space. Yeah, Greasy's been a real nuisance for TSM to deal with in this game and the last one. Just getting in the way. Being as awkward as possible. He's um, so far played pretty impressively in the, the Dominus. I thought it was going to be too much for him to handle, the additional power, but he's actually done well. Played a very composed style. Just a minute left in the game now. Still 1 0 to complexity. Will they be able to hold on? Yes, Sam are still looking quite team chugging. Yeah, this is where we saw the playstyle change during the last game. I'd expect to see it again here. Well, something's got to change here because Complexity looking to just take the 1-0 win. Remco believing that one enough to be too high. Almost got a follow-up. Flakes. Greasy Meisters may have a chance here. Instead, forces the challenge. Over to the corner. No boost around to try and steal. Complexity move themselves to their own side of the field. But Mognus might make that a little bit awkward. But Flakes can get over there first. And he's found the perfect angle. It's away from Remco. More time shaving off the clock. Well, that's almost the second goal as well. Remco got caught out. A pretty weak clear. Complexity are just dominating the pressure right now, dominating the territory. Sometimes there's not enough boost for TSM to get out of their own half with because the mid is being controlled by Complexity the entire time. This is it now, final 10 seconds. Can they get the goal? Magnus makes a crucial touch and Flakes follows up. That might be it. Will TSM get another opportunity? Doesn't look like it. Complexity take them in five and they move on to day two of the competition. And the day one woes for TSM continue over here in Valencia. Complexity come back from being 2-1 down in the series. And take the last two games. They've got to feel really good about that. Like we said, the team on the rise Indeed, at the moment, yeah. able to take down Dallas's runners-up. That has got to feel phenomenal for them. Yeah, TSM have been stalling for quite a while now. You know, play well one week, play pretty poorly the next. And it's just another road bump on their journey with this uh, current roster. Not out yet, we expect them to bounce back in the lower bracket. They have faltered there in the past though, so we'll have to wait and see. Meanwhile, Complexity, lots of bigger and better things. Looking forward to seeing them play on day two as well. Absolutely, but we are gonna be done here. Congratulations to Complexity. We're gonna be back after a quick commercial break.
Things are getting just underway here at DreamHack Valencia, where we witness another victory coming out here, this time out of complexity over that of TSM. And I feel like we were torn up here on what we expected from both of these teams. But at the end of the day, you know, complexity is the one who pulls at. Yeah, it was an incredibly uh, defensive series. I think yeah. we can all agree. And that was similar to what we saw at Dallas, where complexity had two perfect sweeps on day two. TSM, obviously, extremely defensive throughout. So... Very defensive. I felt like the X factor was flakes. 100%. A few times he had those dribble plays just moving up the field to make something happen for complexity. Yeah. It was a really slow-paced match to me. It felt like it was a lot of TSM controlling the ball and trying to keep you know the ball within themselves and getting that second touch. And then it came down to how complexity reacted to that and if they were in the midfield really aggressing and cutting off that second hitter, that flip reset that TSM was getting. Yeah, and we talked a lot about the defensive capabilities out of TSM, and it felt like we still saw that at moments, but it definitely wasn't as maybe tried and true as we were kind of indicating, it seemed like. So the first three games, I felt like on both sides, very defensive. Then as soon as there was one double commit, both teams could capitalize on that relatively quickly. And at first, that was more on complexity, just having a couple more, maybe a few more double commits, but they figured it out towards the end of the series. And again, I just feel like Flakes was that one X factor where like everyone else felt like it was very methodical, yeah. just trying to find a spot, but Flakes was creating those spots. And the methodical gameplay from TSM was working so well in the first few games, but then Complexity just reacted so well, and TSM did not switch it up. And these, you know, fakes that Flakes was getting Complexity, they got about two mind games in there that was so great the entire series. Yeah, but that play even there where Flakes, it was kind of a mind game, but he literally couldn't do anything else with that ball. So a little bit of a, maybe a defensive miscue by TSM. And we saw that a few times with Mongus. Uh, he put in a great shot there. And then here's another play by Greasy that, oh, but that goal right there, that uh, overtime winner was a huge play for them to get that momentum going. And it was a cause from uh, TSM actually overcommitting. <laughs> Got a really weird dunk there. <laughs> Greasy happy. Desk, already That's introducing himself, be. getting things underway. It is yeah, Greasy Meister. Greasy Meister, how are you feeling after that victory? And first, uh, actually, you know what? I just want to say you have the greatest gift I've ever seen on the internet. Uh, back what? from uh, you tasting the DreamHack water. Oh my god! Oh, how my. good was it? it? Yeah, like seriously, because you, it looks, it looked like it quenched the thirst. To be completely honest with you, it tasted like normal water, <laughs> <laughs> amazingly Acted. enough. So yeah, wow. but it was yeah, <laughs> there and then it was. So what, what is it with dream hacks that, you know, we get complexity to kind of evolve, it seems like, come to a new echelon, if you will? I don't know. I feel like it's a little bit more casual than other bands. Like, you play a few games backstage, get good and warm, and then you come on stage to play, like, important games. So uh, I think that's the difference. You don't get thrown into the stage, like, right away. So All crazy. Like I want from you some opinions on this European roster moves that, that are going down. So we see Deep Toss with Astral and the Bricks bringing in a lot. So far, yeah. like, how do you feel those are going? I have no idea. A lot seems to be fitting well with Bricks, though, so uh, they're a good team, so... But I haven't really looked too much into it, but... Just kind of focusing on yourself? Yeah. Yeah, and these it. are really long days here at DreamHack, you know, it's, it's a huge grind, so you guys yep. already made it to day two so early on in day yeah. one. How relieving is that for you? That is actually pretty good. Like, I'm gonna go back to the hotel, eat something, and probably... Uh, just pass out? I should probably not say what <laughs> I was about to say, but have a Coke and just relax and enjoy life, so... I gotta ask. So, it, it, do you all are you always as chill and as lax as you are here? Yeah. Because you said that DreamHack is a little bit more lax, but I feel like with this kind of mentality that it seems like you provide for the roster, it seems like it's got to be pretty smooth sailing a lot of the time there for complexity. Yeah, I mean, like I don't take it like too serious most of the time. Like when we're in, uh, on the stage, for example, it goes how it goes. So you can't be mad at your team or anything. So. Just do what you gotta do. I love the mentality there, yeah, I'm man. sweating like a pig today, so I was, uh... <laughs> hey, don't, we all are. It's, it's a little hot, tossy, it's hot, it's <laughs> to be fair. To be fair. All yeah. right, we are gonna go to a commercial break, and when we come back, we're gonna have our next series, and it only gets better here in Valencia. It is gonna be PSG taking on Triple Trouble. You're not gonna wanna miss it.